Phil Brown has masterminded promotions at the highest level, but he now faces his toughest challenge yet as he steps down to the National League North. Can he have similar success at Kidderminster Harriers? We're here to find out how last season's relegation has affected his plans to bounce back at the first attempt. Phil, are you as surprised as me? Kidderminster Harriers are playing in step two because the facilities and everything here are top notch. Yeah, it's a good question to tell you the truth, but it all goes down supposed to the history of the club, you know. It is steeped in a lot of tradition. There's some really good people here. I mean, one of the main reasons why I, I decided to, to join, I don't think I was being interviewed for the job. I think it was more on an advisory basis where the chairman, Richard Lane, and uh, his number two, shall we call it, Dean Holdsworth, wanted us to see what I could do to improve the place, you know. And you look around and you go, well, you can't do much here. <laughs> it's a fantastic facility. You look at the surface there, you probably, you won't get better than that outside the premise. That's it's unbelievable. I was taken to a training ground. You haven't even been to a training ground. It's 44 acres of land. I had 14 <laughs> pitches. And I'm saying, and Dean Oldsworth knows this because he was at Bolton Wanderers when we when we had all that success in the Premier League. We got success at Bolton Wanderers under Sam with two and a half pitches. I had success at Hull City getting promoted to the Premier League with two and three quarter pitches, if yeah, you want to call there. it. But I go to Kidding in Saharis and they've got 44 acres of land and, and training facilities. But every one of the pitches gets used, you know. So everything about it was just in place and they asked me to try and keep them in the National League last season, which we failed at, unfortunately, having turned a little bit of a corner after three or four games, winning all three or four. Then all of a sudden, we just hit a, a bit of a, a, a lean patch and, and didn't survive. But now we're National League North, National League South. You, you see the, the quality of some of the, the teams in them in them divisions, and we've witnessed that already. And not just quality of, of teams, quality of managers, coaches, some of the players. It has to be said, if you're a Spurs supporter and you're going to go to the Spurs-Brentford game, which was, I was offered a ticket, unfortunately, I'm working. <laughs> uh, but to go to that facility at that level, you go, wow, you know, Michelin yeah. star chefs, etc., etc. That's unbelievable. But you come here and you'll see a proper game of football. You'll see two and a half, three thousand supporters. You'll see people who are passionate about the game and passionate about their club. So it doesn't matter if it's step one, step two, step three. We're very fortunate to have good teams, good facilities and good people. How different is a non-league changing room to a Premier League one? Familiarity breeds contempt. You still have to have that managerial sort of boundary. But at the same time, I'm an ex-player. I know what it was like to be in a changing room. That was a laugh. And I know what it's like to be in a changing room. That was a serious changing room. And sometimes that affects what you do on a Sunday. It's getting the balance right, you know. It's getting the balance between what we are and what we can be. And, and I think enjoying it along the way is part and parcel of life, you know. And sometimes when you get to the top and, OK, I've been all the way up to if you want to call it category one or step one. <laughs> We've been to the Premier League and it, it was fantastic at its time and it was there's some great people, but it was all about money. It was all about making a profit. It was all, all about, you know, the turnover and the finances and this, that and the other. Here, you've still got the same problem, but at the same time, it's more enjoyable. Yes, it's a game of football. I understand it's a game of football, but I'm enjoying the way my team's playing, but it's still about winning. And that that is the key to everything in football. How much did you have to change your managerial style at this level? I think I'm more open now. I think I'm more accessible. Even though we've got a, a backroom staff, I've got Neil McDonald with me, who has been at the highest level, with myself and Sam. I've got Dean Holdsworth as a director of football. I've got great people in the background, but I've got a chief executive, I've got a chief operating officer. I, I can't want for anything. I'm really enjoying it. People say it's non-league football, therefore we're throwing balls into the penalty box and, and everybody's battling. And not on a pitch like that, you're not. Split, he split heads. <laughs> a true story, I'm watching, I'm watching Man City playing into Milan on Tuesday, as we all do. Inter Milan are playing counter-attacking football for the first 20 minutes, and all of a sudden the ball goes out to play about 20 yards up the pitch there, and, and I see two centre-halves go from the halfway line at the penalty box, and there's a long throw goes in, I'm going, hello! <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> They're doing long throws at Inter Milan. Proper football. <laughs> Proper football. But you have to head the ball. You've still got six foot three centre halves at Man City. Yeah. But you've got six foot three centre halves that can play as well, you know. So the technical side is is obviously of the highest order. The technical side here, honestly, should not be laughed at. We're not just lumping the ball and getting it as far as far away from that goal and as close to that goal as you yeah. can. There's a tactic, of course there is, and there's there's teams that do play that way. We're not one of them. You touched upon the disappointment of being relegated last season. <clears throat> What's that first team talk like for the new season with the ambition to bounce straight back up? It was quite easy because um, we evolved very quickly. You know, we had 10, 12 players left us at the end of last season and on the back of relegation, we had a something like a 400, 450,000 pound drop in, in budget. So you're now cutting your wow. cloth accordingly. We've now got 10 new players in. So basically you can say we're a new team, but there is a fundamental foundation of Kidderminster Harriers 
players that are still here. You know, your Alex Pennies, you know, you've got Christian Dibble in goals, who we all know Andy Dibble. I played with Andy Dibble. You know, you've got players like Amari Morgan Smith, Ashley Hemmings, players who have been here, seen it and done it, been promoted from this division before. They know what it's like to play for Kidderminster and they're spreading the word very, very quickly. And the new players have come in and integrated so well. So it's it's been an enjoyable process at the moment, but it's still about getting promotion. How important is it that the club were full time for, for you personally to take on this job? That's a big one. That's massive to me. Uh, I'd like to be on the golf course three times a week, 100%. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to be a Jimmy Bullard with a single figure handicap or even a scratch handicap. I'm just happy with my handicap yeah. playing once a week as opposed Lovely. to three times a week. Being on the training ground four days a week, five days a week, and then playing on a sad day, you know you're going to go into the game better prepared than the opposition, possibly. Better fitness levels than the opposition, possibly, and hopefully better tactically. So with that in mind, really you've got no arguments. I think there's four teams, maybe five, in our division that are full-time and we're one of them. So, you know, we've got to be in that top four or five. And what are you all about on the pitch? How do you like your team to play? Football, proper football, you know, it's, um, you know, when we need to mix it, we need to mix it. The best teams find the way how to win the game of football. Today, against Alfreton, it'll be one hell of a battle, but it'll be about that six-yard box there and that six-yard box there, period. You tell me a Premier League manager that's not saying the same thing. It's about finishing and it's about defending and keeping a clean sheet. So if we can do both sides of the coin and at the same time in the middle of the park play some football and put bums on seats, job done. One man who has experienced the highs and the lows of playing for Kidderminster is the club captain Amari Morgan-Smith. But how does he find playing for a former Premier League manager? I think it's, it's refreshing. A manager of his calibre, really, coming down to this, this level. Speaks volumes from him, to be honest. And for me, it's been refreshing to just hear the stories that he has and the qualities that he brings on and off the field. Man management skills are really good as well, which I think every manager needs. He's up there with one of the better, better managers that I've had in my career, definitely. Sounds like he's got a great camaraderie with the players. We heard him as we arrived mm. laughing and joking. That must be quite nice in the change room to have. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's day in, day out, to be honest. As soon as you get into training, there's going to be um, a good buzz around the place. And that just goes, goes ten toes with obviously going onto the football field and, and feeling ten feet tall, if you like, um, which, is, which is a good feeling as a football player. What are his training sessions like? It's intense. Attention to detail is, is one thing that I, I enjoy. And I think it's um, all about details and high standards, really and hopefully that can um, lead us into promotion this season. But as it stands at the minute, we're, um, we're looking in, um, in good stead, yeah. As captain, are you the go-to with the players and the gaffer? Have you ever had to go and knock on his door and <laughs> ask some difficult questions? Can we have a night out? Can we do this? Um, yeah, funny enough, um, we do have a, a good relationship, to be honest. We speak probably on a day-to-day -day basis, really, on the, even if it's in and around the training room, um, training ground, on the phone. And I think that that's a job that a captain has to do. You have to have a comfortable relationship, and I also have to be comfortable with going to him about anything. I probably haven't had that relationship with a manager that I've had with him. It's a kind of a father figure, really, um, which is good. Relegation was obviously very difficult. How important is it the club bounce back this season? Obviously, it's my duty to care as, as, as one of the experienced players to try and, if you like, give something back to the fans and, and the football club because we don't deserve to be at this level. It's a tough league to get out of. I think whenever clubs come here and play here, they, they kind of put on a show. Nice surface. They probably change their style of play sometimes when they come here, which we also expect as well. We have to just try and um, worry about ourselves at the first and foremost as kid amidst the Harriers, try and get promotion. And obviously that's been our aim since we got relegated last season and um, it still is. You've got to enjoy playing on that pitch. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. I think I'm, I'm used to it and credit to the uh, grounds and the staff and the, and the people behind the scenes because as a football player, it's one of the things that you do. You can turn your nose up if the pitch isn't right. You, you look for excuses, you look for um, little things that aren't going your way. But I think if you've got no excuses out there, it's up to us as players to produce. And once we cross the white line, it's all about winning, to be honest. Paul, well, how do you get this pitch looking like a Premier League surface? Well, it takes a lot of hard work. Basically, what we do is we rotary mow and cinder mow the pitch, and then obviously we use the irrigation, obviously, to irrigate it. It mainly takes over a week to get it re prepared properly for a game, and that's about it, really. How long does it take for a pitch to recover after a game? Normally, it takes two to three days, but sometimes you haven't got the choice. This week, we've got a match on Monday, so I have to work all weekend to uh, get this pitch uh, established and ready. Does the gaffer ever knock on your door and say, can you cut the pitch like this because I want to play a certain style of football? He can have a mention in my ear and mention <laughs> about uh, that he wants to play flowing football, so therefore he'll want more irrigation on, but very rarely does Phil Brown come to me and, and uh, mention anything about 
doing something to the surface. How important is it to, to water the pitch to get that slick surface? Yeah, it's, it's very important. I mean, if, if you're playing passing football, which Phil Brown likes to do, then irrigation is very important. So it, it gives it a zip across the top layer of the grass. And so therefore they can play freely, yeah. Phil Brown managed in the Premier League during the Barclaysman era. Now we might be a few weeks too late for this trend, but we thought we'd play Winner Stays On, the Barclaysman edition. Phil, Yakubu or Morton Gamps Pedersen? Oh dear me. Yakubu. Yakubu or Rory Delap? Yakubu. Yakubu or Kevin Doyle? Kevin Doyle. Kevin Doyle or Kenwyn Jones? Kevin Doyle. Kevin Doyle or Lasana Diara? Oh, ho, ho. Diara. Lasana Diara or Bred Hangerland? Diara. Lasana Diara or JJ Akocha? Akocha. Akocha or Tugai? Akocha. You may as well keep going because I'm sticking with Akocha. Akocha or Alano? Akocha. Akocha or Jimmy Bullard? <laughs> James Richard Bullard. <laughs> Love it. During his spell at Hull City, Phil Brown famously gave a half-time team talk out on the pitch when his side were 4-0 down against Manchester City. But it was the one and only Jimmy Bullard who recreated that moment after scoring a penalty at the Etihad in 2009. So do the Kidderminster players have any plans to recreate it themselves? We've always spoken in-house, to be honest, about when, when we're going to do it as a celebration. Oh, you've um, got to do it. But obviously I've said it out loud, but I think one once it gets to a, a um, probably an important game where it, it matters, we probably scoring the goal that gets us promoted, then we'll do it then because that will yeah. get them probably the most most looks and the most views. But um, it's definitely one that one of the players have got in their head um, and it's, it's a great thing to see, to be honest. But we haven't played that badly yet to, for it to happen. <laughs> Hopefully it's not today. Whoever scores that goal is going to have to be very brave, aren't yeah. they? What do you reckon the aftermath would be? No, like? I think it did. <laughs> and that's what I mean about the gaffer light. I feel... I feel like he'll take that um, really well, to be honest. It's a, it's a bit of banter and it's a little bit of, uh, you, you wouldn't say he's, he's doing, we're doing it in a bad way of light, do you know what I mean? So I think he'll take it quite well, to be honest. How important is it to get that promotion this season? I, I want to kind of keep it calm down a little bit because the expectation is so high. We've got a great squad in there, good football players, players that shouldn't be playing at this level. So I think on paper we should, if you like, be there or thereabouts. But like you say, it, it no means that we're going to just walk, walk the league. We take every every game as it comes. We go um, toe to toe with every every club that comes here and it's always a battle. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it slowly, but we won't go too far ahead because we have to respect the league as much as it, as it brings to you. Um, Saturday, Tuesday, and I'm sure it's going to get colder as, it, as you see in this. Um, and we'll, we'll see a lot of players shying away from playing in grounds that may be not like this. I've, I've been there before. I've, I've been promoted already with Kidderminster, so I know what it takes. And hopefully we can do it again this season. Do you feel that added pressure of being one of a handful of teams that are full-time? Great question. I think that's one of the things that people do say when they come here and say, oh, you're full-time, we should be fitter, we should be stronger. But I think once you cross the white line and the football is kicked, it's 11 v 11, it's man v man. That goes out the window. Hopefully, come the last stages of games, that, get that sort of things kind of tell in terms of your fitness. Um, element and stuff like that but it's like when we played West Ham Premier League club comes down to a conference club it's the same same ball game really because as soon as you get over the, over the white line the crowd gets behind you elements like a free kick might go in the referee's not on your side so everything can happen in the, in the football game but yeah we're full time and we, we stick our chest out with pride we don't take it lightly we don't cut corners in training ground um, and in the training aspect of things so um, we, we prepare ourselves as, as much as we can when it comes to a 3 o'clock or a 7.45 kickoff. Football is nothing without the fans, especially ones as loyal as this guy. Scott, how long have you been supporting Kidderminster Harriers? Uh, it's been a while now, so I've been supporting Kidderminster for around 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember your first game? I don't remember who it was against, actually. I've always wanted to try and work it out. I do remember walking into the stadium on my first first game and sort of just being like, wow, look at this. Like, um, and just getting hooked from day one. It is an amazing stadium for you fans to come support your team in. Definitely is. I mean, I think every fan will always say that, you know, their ground's always like the home stuff, but it is, it's a fantastic stadium. And you know, the ones I've traveled around, there are some good stadiums in our league, um, but there's nothing feels quite like being at Agra. And the gaffer said, you get good numbers, two and a half thousand for a home game? Yeah, the, the fans here are fa fantastic. I mean, we've had some bad times over the years and the fans just still keep turning up in, in their numbers. Yeah, we average around about two and a half thousand at the moment for a game, which is a fantastic sort of thing for the, this level. And yeah, the chairman backs us a lot. So they've been doing schemes to get people in. Uh, last season was a lot of kids for a pound at the end of the season to try and get like more supporters in and get those kids obviously hooked like I did 30 years ago. And what's it like having a former Premier League manager as your gaffer? It's fantastic, isn't it? Like, it's 
It's the guy that I used to watch on telly years ago, you know, and you, you said then you never really think that he's going to come to a club like Kidderminster. So when it was announced, it was yeah, a bit like, is, is that, that the same one? And, <laughs> you know, I was getting a lot of messages from people saying, like, is this the same Phil Brown from the Premier League? And I was like, yes, yes, it is. And uh, yeah, it was a massive coup, and it obviously gets everyone excited um, around the town as well, and again, starts bringing fans back in. Have you noticed an improvement on the pitch with Phil's style of play? Yeah, there's been a change in style of play at the start of the season. And, Obviously, we had a fantastic start, uh, but it's not just on the pitch. Even like from things like I see off the pitch, and like the sort of way that Phil talks about the game, you can just tell there's it's just obviously been at a different level, and his knowledge of the game is just like unbelievable. Phil's not the only high-profile name that you've had at this club. Who was the manager before? It would have been Jan Morby, is the man you're on about. Um, yeah, so in the late nineties, when we got promoted in the 99-2000 season, um, our manager was then Jan Morby of. Liverpool and I uh, believe he played for Denmark as well internationally. The players he was able to bring in at the time, like Mike Marsh, who was also formerly a Liverpool player at the time, he brought him in and he was like one of the best players I've seen up here. It's just that contact, a bit like with Phil, you know, he's got the contacts from being in the Premier League and those sort of sources that he can bring into the club. That again was another, probably one of the biggest times for Harriers and the only time that we've ever really had a stint in the uh, Football League. You're not just a Kidderminster fan though, you are the stadium announcer. It's one of those things that you don't really ever expect to to be part of when you're standing in the stands as a, as a child, like what growing up with it, uh, you never really think that you'll be part of that match day experience. Get to be on the pitch in the tunnel with the players before they come out, being around, announcing them on uh, for a fan of, of the team. It's a, it's a bit of a dream come true. And finally, can a Premier League manager lead this club to promotion? Absolutely. I mean, Yamal, we led us to promotion from the conference to the Football League, so why can't we do it from the north? How do you get this club promoted? At the moment, we're in a good place. I think the way we're playing and, and the way the, the supporters are coming week in and week out, but we've just got to hang on the shirt tails of a team that's been trying to do it for three years. And, and if you want to take an example of it, Scunthorpe United. They've been through trials and tribulations of you know being in the, in the Football League, as we all know, but then relegated to non-league and then found it difficult to get out of there. And because they're trying so hard to get out there, they get relegated again. So, you know, you're looking at a team that we played only, what, three weeks ago. They beat us 2-0. A strong performance from them there's no doubt about it but there was moments in the game where we didn't work the goalkeeper or we didn't hit the target or we hit the crossbar and they didn't they put the ball in the back in there twice and we didn't so you learn from the game that there is still a little bit a little bit of a way to go and it's it's down to character it's down to strength it's down, down to personality of your team but i think we're, we're nearly there we're close to it you know and if we can achieve hopefully fingers crossed getting into the top three two come the end of the season we're big enough to go up